Okay. <laughs> Connecting to cloud server. The webinar is now being recorded and we have uh, five participants. All right. Okay. And now I'm going to go live on Facebook, which is now toggling me over to Facebook. Okay. And I'm going to a page known as the Alexander Valley Film Society. Best page ever. I'm going to close it. <laughs> It is best page ever. Best page, page ever. Best page ever. Hello to our listeners joining us. Uh, joining us here in Sonoma County, sheltering in place with the Alexander Valley Film Society. Um, let's see, go live. And what happened? Do you, you still see us? Zoom, zoom. I can see you. Hold on one second. That's not Zoom. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I panicked. I panicked. <laughs> How is that Hi. Zoom? <laughs> it is Zoom. <laughs> One second. I was trying to close my chat so we wouldn't hear the beeps. So. Okay. Can you still see me? Yes. Okay. So it says it's preparing live. Ooh, we have 11 participants on with us now. We're like wow. going wow. viral. <laughs> it's okay. not like people are trapped in their houses or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, Okay, so uh, we are totally just playing with this to see uh, what... Hang out with each hang other. Hang out and what we can accomplish together. Yes. Uh, sheltering in place here together, viral, uh, virtually. Um, so uh, joining, my name is Katherine Hecht. I'm the executive director of the Alexander Valley Film Society. Welcome everyone. Uh, I am sheltering in place here in my home in Cloverdale. And joining us today, we have uh, writer and star of the week, Rick Gomez. Hi, everybody. With his beard yes. and his better half, <laughs> not to be confused with his beard, Jenny no. Gomez. <laughs> <No. laughs> and Jenny uh, is not only, uh, uh, Jenny is married to Rick, but Jenny is also on the Alexander Valley Film Society Board of Directors. So welcome to both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Happy to be here. We've had a comment already from a woman named Tess, hmm, yeah. who says woo-hoo. Yeah. Hi, Tess. Woo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Tess. So um, I'm so glad the two of you uh, were up for this. Uh, not that you had a choice, but um, I really am glad you're up for this because you are two of my favorite people in the whole world. Oh, we love you too. Oh, well, I love you too. And you're also uh, immensely creative, multi-talented. Uh, you approach things from a lot of different ways and uh, your parents, uh, your artists, you live here in Sonoma County um, and you have uh, an increasingly varied body of work that we get to talk about today, but specifically we wanted to focus on the week uh, for myriad reasons, not the least of which is because you shot it here. Yes. Um, yeah. In and around Sonoma County, um, also uh, locations, was it prominently shot in Healdsburg? Mm, yeah. Yes, yeah, mostly in Healdsburg, Healdsburg, but we did between here and Cloverdale too, we shot in Cloverdale. You did. Um, but most, mostly in Healdsburg. I mean, it was a lot at our house. Uh, a lot of it was at our house. and then. Mm -hmm. We went a little bit in LA for some of the LA sequences. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what, let's get right into it then. So um, assuming that all of our viewers today had an opportunity to go and pay and watch the movie. Unless you're a uh, Prime member, I think it's free it's if free you're a Prime, Prime member. Oh, okay. Well, you still, you still get a kickback from that, right? Like seven cents or something? So, something. so much money. It's, yeah, it's so I mean. Much. <laughs> <laughs> we spend seven cents, Woo! man. Oh, okay. it lasts. Well, no, I think we get like 1% of the seven cents. Something like Something that. Like and we that. split that three ways. Yeah, it's, so it's a lot. It's really helping toward the college education. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Well, we, <laughs> we support small business and local yes. artists. Yes. Yay. Yes. Um, so talking about the week. So Rick, in your, Walk us through a little bit of how the project even came to be. Where did the idea come from? How did it start to get set down on paper? Tell us a little bit about that process. This is a super interesting story because um, it, I made it with my two writing partners, John and John, John Gunn and John Mann, and, and we agreed that we were going to start shooting before we knew what the, what the story was fully. So we shot it over nine, ten months, 
and we would build off of what we had just shot. So the, the first scene that we ever shot was the moment where Dick is looking at the envelope on the fridge that says Dick on it. And we shot that and we said, okay, good. So now his wife's definitely left and that worked. That scene worked. But we don't know all the parameters of what that means and what if you, they were on this precipice of their anniversary and what if, and then we started to build from just shooting that scene together over a weekend, exploring kind of what the tone of the piece was, where the humor came from, what, how much time we wanted to take inside the scenes. And so we'd write these pods and then shoot these pods over nine or 10 months. We really didn't know how the movie ended until we got real close to it. So it's a really interesting process and actually kind of a process that we keep using over and over again. Um, even when we go into production on something, it's sort of like 75 to 80% we know kind of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then we leave a little bit open for, for magic to kind of get in there and, and for the piece to kind of feedback, give us a little feedback loop. And we did learn a lot from this movie because the sub subsequent movies we've made, we've outlined a little bit more just for practicality purposes, I'd say. But, um, cause, but this was really fun because so many fun things happened that weren't necessarily written in the script, like the dog, our dog was in the movie. And she was not Scheduled written into the movie, the movie yeah. but we weren't thinking about it, but she just <laughs> kept coming into all the shots. Yeah. And so she became part of the movie. And plus Dick's <laughs> sheltering in place the entire movie. Uh, we were like, he's, a, he's the original Pretty social much. distancer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were rewatching, I'm like, Ken never leaves his house. What, yeah. is, what is wrong with him? Thank uh, you for really bringing that back into today. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but he's, but he, yeah, so, so we had to figure out a way to sort of say, where's the, how can you tell a story about a guy who's alone and, and, and bummed out about where he is in his life? And the dog then became the sidekick that was super important. And sort of the Wilson, you know, from um, Castaway. When you have someone alone a lot, Wilson. he's, she becomes the dog Wilson, someone to talk to. Right. So she became really important. And then what's funny is we had a screening of the film uh, while we were in the editing process. And, and, and um, Rick's character, Dick, goes to L.A. And the dog didn't go to L.A. And people were distraught. They were like, <laughs> where's the dog? It's where's those, Mama? Where's moments. Dick's dog? Yeah. And we were like, what? It's and one they, of those moments as a filmmaker where you're sort of asking notes to people. And you're like, so... When we get to the third act and, we, when he, and Dick goes to LA to kind of see if he's going to salvage what was once a career and he sees his brother and stuff and people all raise their hands and they were like, what happened to the dog? That's all they care about. And we're like, well, the dog's at a friend's house or in a shelter. Whatever. It doesn't matter where the dog is. But what about Dick? And they're like, I am distraught about the dog as well. Like no one could let the dog out. So we had to put the dog in the car and bring her to LA. So and she, and she, we, she just sort of, her, her, she's in that stuff. Mm -hmm. But but she was putting out oh, there she is. There she is. Um, so Keep yeah. Rosie. So you never know who your star of the movie is going to be even when you're shooting it. She, you don't, uh, you can't even, she, she, was, she stole the show. And very, she's very photogenic. Yes. And very, she passed away sadly, but, um, oh, Gertie's saying hi. Um, <laughs> Once you say dog, Gertie's like, hey! I'm she on. would do whatever we wanted. It, we were shocked. She, that camera would turn on and she would just come alive. Yeah. She was kind of amazing. She's and a really, yeah. On your end, can you see the comments, the, the chat function that's come up? No. Uh, no. Okay. So uh, Hillary, who is uh, joining us all the way from Healdsburg, nice. um, uh, nice. says, uh, love the dog, especially with the ball. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Right, and all of that is her mm -hmm. and what, what she would do. That's, that's the way she would hang out in bed with me. And so <laughs> paws and legs akimbo. And so we just, set up a, we just set up the camera to, you know, on an overhead shot and just rolled. And then, yeah. you know, she'd leave and then I'd be like, hey, Rose, and she'd come back yeah. and then I'd bring a ball and squeak it. And she'd lay down next to me and we'd be like, all right, this is day three, you know. Yeah. And she kind of just stayed in it. Um, those are sort of the happy accidents where, you know, that, that we, we, were, we were fortunate enough to, to be able to pursue because of the way we shot the film and, and really this sort of daily pod feature of the film, which is that each day has an event and then we were, we were, we were allowed to kind of um, experiment with the way that, that rolled out. And Rick, you said that you shot over the course of a weekend. Was that just to lay the foundation of the film or like the narrative or... No, so, so we, we, we decided we were going to shoot just one weekend to just see whether or not we had, because this was a tiny crew. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest our crew ever got was about six. Yeah. 
Um, and so the, what, when we, we shot the envelope standoff scene where Dick's looking at the envelope and he makes a martini and does that whole thing, that, that we shot, we shot when well, the guys came up and it was me, John and John, the guys who wrote it. One guy ran sound, one guy ran camera and I acted it. There's three people and Jenny making lunch. And we, and we, <laughs> and literally we just shot to, just to see if the camera was decent enough, just to see if our lighting was okay, just how long it would take us to get through stuff. And then we started to collect people because we had footage. We'd go, I th we think this is the beginning of our movie. And then people would come and go, you know what? I'll, I'll PA for a day or I'll PA for a weekend. And then we started getting actors in. And That's I said, how we hey, we, well. was yeah. justified. He was yeah. filming the show justified. And I said, you want to come up for four days? And by that point, we, had, we, we knew that, you know, so we take that scene and we wouldn't know much about the story. And we'd go, okay, this is great. So she leaves him. And they had this thing together. They had a company together. Maybe he's like a talk show host. Maybe he's like a, we didn't know any of that. It was sort of wow. feedbacking on itself. And we're like, okay, cool. That's cool. That'd be really interesting. They share a business together. They're connected creatively together. And then, you know, and then so then the separation is going to be kind of messy. But like he has these things he has to do for the celebration. So what's one of the things he could do? Well, they would all go to like the tennis club and have a tennis day together. That's we were super... members of the vineyard club at the time. And we were like, you know, oh, we could use that. We'll so Dick will go there. do that by himself. And like, yeah. all right, who could be that? And then they were like, we know the stand-up comic, Kobe Tolman is great. And he'll come up for the weekend and we'll shoot him. To... And, so, and so that's how it was built. And so mm -hmm. once a month, yeah. twice a month maybe they'd come up they'd drive yeah. up and we'd shoot for three or four days in the weekend and get a whole we shot uh joelle we shot 40 pages in four days with yeah. joelle wow. all of joelle's stuff was four days yeah. speaking of joelle let's take a quick look Only Catherine could hear it. You know what's great is the cookie crumble because it's so not, it was just a brittle cookie and the way she plays that whole thing as it falls apart is horrible and it just like, oh, crumbles in yeah, her face. It sounds perfect. What, so good. tell, how did she get involved with it? Um, I, we, so we started to write a character about the, we, we wanted to have this character of the, of the, the caterer and that she would represent this sort of, um, pivot point or, or it's a, a way for Dick to see through the, the forest through the trees. And so, um, we started to brainstorm what she could be and what she'd be going through. And, um, and we came up with a lot of really interesting, like John, John Gunn was like, you know, in movies where like the dude has an interesting moment with the, with this female lead and like, and then he just thinks that he could kiss her in movies. Like, that's horrible. Why do people do that? He goes, we should do a scene that's the opposite of that. Where like Dick goes to kiss her and she like smushes like his that. face and like, yeah. why would you think I'd want to kiss you? And right. this is um, all pre- all of the stuff Hashtag yeah you, right? but 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 it was a great idea because it, we got we get such a huge laugh by this moment where you deceive the audience into thinking like this is what you think you know about you know this is we yeah. shared this moment together we've had this connection and then it's just normal for us to just go and kiss and she's like yeah uh, then what are you doing they play with it too with the door uh -oh. when he keeps opening the door yeah when she keeps opening and the she door keeps door opening now. the door and, and you do the whole um what is that movie called? Pure Copy. Um, Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. Yeah. She's like, you don't complete me. We're the anti Jerry Maguire. Anti Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Yeah, and then and even even sort of um, messing around with uh, with grieving for a husband, we 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 started to just talk about something. It, it was a story that a lot of it's based on stories with people. Almost almost all of it's hundred percent people's anecdotes of, that happen in their lives. And and there's a story about a friend who um, who lost her husband. And she's like, I'm sick of people grieving for me and looking at me like I am the saddest person in the world when it actually wasn't working. And he was not an awesome dude, you guys. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that's a really interesting way to look at that thing. And what Dick totally. learns in meeting someone who's that honest when so much of his life is just bullshit is kind of interesting. You know, we, 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 hopefully we played with it in a way that kept people, um, you know, uh, thinking and, 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 and on their toes about it, I hope. Um, I yeah. have a question too. Yeah. Um, uh, we may have, by the way, we may have lost the audio when I played the clip. So oh, we'll, yeah. we'll, 
experiment with that one more time in a minute. But um, speaking of, so this is such a family affair in the making of the film, where you made the film, um, and now talking about conceptually how it came to be. I mean, it really is like um, um, improv doesn't even cover it. It's more like uh, a an origination of your like being in the moment with your friends and your family and then and then everybody is involved crew wise and in the film and so on and so forth and I always wondered what it was like for you Rick to film the sex scene with your wife standing behind the camera yeah and, and Amanda had played my wife on tv uh -huh. for for two years on a show and, called what about Brian um, oh, yeah right. and so and so Amanda was my tv wife uh, so TV I was used kids. to watching him kiss her because for two years we were married we were married for two on years. television yeah I mean it was in, you know it's tv married but you're still like you go to events and they're like hey the married couple you know like there's a pretend <laughs> marriage and then there's your real marriage and um so on that level that wasn't too difficult that I mean no. I, I mean you you're kind of like eh, whatever but it was, um, but, but because it, that's kind of what it is. We right? met, we met on a movie, Rick and I, I produced a film, I cast him in, and we had a sex scene in it, and I- Don't mention the title of the film, it's out I there. won't. It's out there. <laughs> anyway. Nobody wants to watch it. It was so that. awkward, I was, we were falling in love, but even the sex scene was so weird, so I personally, because I- Weird. Was, it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, you don't that's connect, not it's weird to film a sex scene, even with someone you're dating, it's weird. weird. It, <laughs> Okay. I didn't. Shut up. Weird. The point is, I can't, I'm not just a normal person watching this. I've been, I used to be an actress. I was producing it. I know it, I know what it's like. So no, it wasn't awkward for yeah. me. And what about the kids? Any weirdness there? Like when they've seen the movie, like what is dad doing? No, we did not let them watch that scene. Um, yeah, just because it felt like it was a little, it was a little much. But then they, they watch it now and they're like, whatever. Oh, whatever. It's just, but yeah, they're teenagers. But <laughs> when we filmed it, I think Henry was 10. 10? So he's, he so he's so little. Yeah, we wouldn't let him watch that scene. I mean, just because we think thought it was kind of weird. But then um, once they became teenagers, uh, it was funny to them. Uh, okay, so you've just brought up Henry. I'm going to try again here to bring up this clip and see if we can't get audio. Uh, Rick, do you know what I should be pressing to make it happen? I don't know. Um, is there... There should be audio on it. I am running. Henry was. Oh, and by on. the way, yeah. Oh, you can see the chat. Oh, it just came just up. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, all right. Uh, let me. Henry was so he didn't really want to do it, but he we made him. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, Henry's pretty yeah. good. Okay. Let's, Let's see. I don't is there see a anything? volume? The volume is up oh, here. Yeah. Is it your? Is it my headset? Maybe oh, it's you your, might, your headset. headset. It might be. Try that. For a Try second. That. What's your deal, Stuart? Yep. Yep. I never saw my doctor get so pissed off. And I gotta tell you, I like this in love. Yeah, every day is like the same. It makes me mad. You know what the bad news is? What? That feeling doesn't ever go away. You know what the good news is? No. A few years, you'll be old enough. You can drink. How does that can help? Trust me, <laughs> it helps. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, that. <laughs> um, sorry for all the technical no, snaps. No, 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 it's all good. That film at uh, that moment, he. Oh, boy, he nailed it. Yeah, he's such a good. He's such a good dude. He was so. He was so down with all of it, and then. Mm -hmm. He would, you know, he would go to, to uh, he went to a couple of film festivals. He had to do a, a panel or a question or something. And somebody asked him, like, how did you like working with your dad? And he was sort of like, I mean, he's, I, I feel like my dad's a better actor than I am, but I feel like for the amount of time he's been doing it, I'm <laughs> pretty much right where he's at. And I was like, Good Lord, he was like handicapping himself. Oh, I love him in the doctor's office when he's looking at the cats. And that was like really late at night. So he was pretty young. He had a very early, he had a pretty early bedtime, like 8.39. We couldn't get in the doctor's office till like midnight. And it was late. And he also heard, we used to never swear around our kids, which is not the case anymore. But 
he heard his first swear word uh, that night, or he oh, got to say, he got to say his first word. The cat's asshole. The cat's asshole. He got to say that. He was just, oh my God, yeah, he that made was him so be... excited yeah. to say that word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, uh, Diane, um, I have a question for Diane to ask you in a second, but she also says that she loved your doctor was a vet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The MC Ganey is fantastic too. He's one of the most, he, he's a, a character actor who's got probably 250 credits to his name. Yeah. MC has been in a ton Great of him doing Love Ranch, which is a great movie. Um, and they were in Albuquerque, New Mexico, stuck there for how many couple months a mm, month and a half he was always like mc's over you know they would drink with yeah, me he's together just, they he's just very good friends. salty or wonderful human being and then just he's one of those guys that my dad would say and my dad used to used to say this about fred mcmurray too yeah. which is so ironic he used to say great character actor that guy's a great character actor he's in <laughs> sideways you're watching he's, the sideways he's in everything he's I mean, in he, everything yeah, he's in everything um we would talk stories and i'd go like yeah so um you know, back in the day, I was on stage, whatever, in Paramount. He's like, oh, I was on that stage because I'd, I'd done a, a, a three-episode arc on Happy Days. And I'm like, what? Oh, my God. He's like, oh, yeah, man. The first season of Happy Days. I played Arthur Fonzarelli, one of the sidekick motorcycle guys. And we come in there, Ralph Mouth's talking about whatever. And I go to Mr. Miyagi and I say, hey, man, you want to do it? And I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, he knew everybody. <laughs> he knows and everybody. everybody. But he's the salt of the earth. And he literally, he's the Pied Piper of actors. Actors just we collect around him because, you know, we just, he's just, he, he's top shelf. Everybody in our cast, from Reno Wilson, who's a, another f unbelievable Amazing. character actor, has been around forever, and Amanda Deborah Richards Bay, uh, Rosemary DeWitt, who then mm -hmm. wound up working with us on the shorts. Um, you know, Frank John Hughes has a cameo. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, Jimmy Matteo is fantastic. Savannah Brothers, guys. Joelle Carter is just amazing. I love Joelle's work in the movie. I just think she's amazing. And um, and everybody, we got really lucky. And everybody played full volume on 10. Like everybody came to play and you could tell they were just excited to do the stuff. And and it was just- um, Let's not forget your brother, Josh. My brother, Josh, oh my yeah, my brother. Was, in the robe. Was, was oh my fantastic. God, I love the scene yeah. when he talks about the Annie Lennox maze. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, yeah. just brilliant. And that stuff was a lot of improv. Yeah. That was a lot of like, go home and good, we don't have to write anything now. And that turned into days of stuff that wound up on the cutting room floor. That hot tub, we were shriveled. Skin was coming off of our, it's in the last 30 seconds in the movie, but we had improv for seven hours. Like, you know, oh my God, nuts. Uh, there's, I want to show you another uh, picture. Speaking of, uh, oh, where'd it go? Band of Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Some of our viewers might recognize this young pup. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Rick, how old were you when you shot this? 27. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming up on the on the uh this was our, our twenty year anniversary. We missed it actually. Yeah. The guys get together every year, all the actors and with um, the guys the guys in, in the hundred first airborne easy company had a reunion every single year that they had their reunion when they were all on whoever was the Tacoa guys and the replacements through, they always came together. And so we followed that tradition. And so the first day of our boot camp, the actors all got together for twenty years straight. And this is the first year we're missing it. Yeah. Can't wow. Do. Rick actually was in contact with Tom Hanks about it because he comes and he's like, we got out the reunion, but he can't happen. He's got Corona, so. Oh God. Yeah. Or as you say, he's got the COVID. Got the COVID. He's got the COVID. <laughs> got the COVID. <laughs> so listen, um, I have a question from Diane Vernon, uh, who's joining us all the way from Cloverdale. Yeah. Hey. Dutcher Creek. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, why Michio Kaku, he went to my husband's high school in Palo Alto. Yeah, I just love the idea that there could be another um, astrophysicist or, or theoretical physicist who would argue with Michio and say like, you know, like that guy's full of shit and I'm the real deal. I just thought like having a, it was like Sinead O'Connor ripping the Pope's picture. Right. Right, that's what we were doing the takeoff on. That was that thing. But we wanted to do it like, you know, astrophysicists. I don't know, because we're idiots. When you leave, <laughs> <laughs> stupid men who make dumb jokes that's what they come up with um yeah it just it just was it was hysterically funny to me that there would be like astrophysics or theoretical like, physics wars between each other like, like rappers battles, like, yeah like 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 east coast west beef. coast rap, rapper beef yeah uh, between <laughs> theoretical physicists no but i love i love michio so I, that was just it was just who we picked we could have picked anybody but he's cool yeah so. yeah it was we picked the coolest one out of I love it when you're talking to the plants with the um Yeah, yeah, for the for the uh for the yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it's pretty good. 
That's a yeah. good question, though. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I mean, you're paying attention. Attention. and that is really cool that you went through into your high school. Yeah. Um, so, um, Rick, tell us about. Uh, we're we're going to get a little bit about to industry right now in real time, what it's like for you as a filmmaker and a storyteller, Jenny, for you as a producer. Um, but uh, tell me a little bit about what's been going on right before this point. So you've been working on a series of short films. Yep. Tell us a little bit about that. So, so last year we started kind of in this, a similar process of the week, not knowing exactly where we were going. We shot a, a, a short film called I'm No Holiday that won the audience award at Alexander Valley Film Festival. Yes, it did. Um, and was incredibly supported by the festival. Um, and we shot two more in a series that I kind of figured out overnight, over a couple of nights, that that's where it wanted to go and that there were more characters that wanted to talk and, and say stuff. So we made two more of those safe and wasting everyone's time and uh, gone today here tomorrow. And so now we're building this sort of um, uh, series, episodic series of these sort of mockumentaries, not sort of, they're mockumentaries based on imaginary artists who have really interesting struggles that they're trying to get through. They're, they're beautiful, strange, funny, sad, our usual mantra. usual mantra. And we have all these wonderful actors that we're tapping into that want to do them. So Rick's been furiously writing them, but we also are thinking about maybe other people writing them and keep, just keep going with the series because they're fascinating and getting really interesting friends of ours, people to be the actors in them, which is fun. Right, and so right where we left off was at the, the sort of um, beginning of taking all three of them out to the marketplace in which that was our big push. So we were, I know, I know Holiday was gonna play at Aspen Short Aspen Fest. Short. And we were about to go sit down with a bunch of people and figure out like, okay, how do we take these three things yeah. and start to go down this road? So that's on pause, yeah. but there's a lot of people's stuff's on pause. But in the, in the meantime, like, you know, we have to do this and we have to stay creative and we have to know that there's support inside of our community and then the greater community and then the global community. And so, you know, we're just, I, look, I, I feel like I, I, I talk to so many artists, um, whether they're the, they're the artists that we, have as friends in our community or the artists that we've have in the larger community um, about surviving this. And a lot of it is really just kind of like artists understand what it's like to be vulnerable, right? Like we all get that, but the rest of the world is going like, oh shit, there's some vulnerable stuff going on. Like we're, we're like these delicate little human beings. We're not, this isn't super easy. And I think that's a time to kind of be like, hey, we, we know this game. This is a really shitty yeah. game. We get it. This is hard. Do you want and then kind of collect around, and just collect around that. And 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 so although all the the sort of momentum of that and everybody's momentum is ground to a halt, I still have a lot of hope that great stories win, people learn, we get better, and we and and we're gonna be okay. Um, and maybe I have to I have to hold that. I think we do have to hold that. Um, but stuff like this is awesome. Yeah. It's awesome for me to just be able to think of something, you know, we did a few years ago and, and it, it means more the world. And it I was hope so it, fun to revisit it. Um, yeah. Belly and I watched it this morning. We're obsessed with this puzzle and we were, oh, let's watch it while we do the puzzle because we've seen it. We both just stopped doing the puzzle and we were just laughing and um, just enjoying the whole thing. It's, and that's what we kind of came up with. The, we were both right now we're watching going, uh, Dick is such a social isolator. It's so funny. He's always standing apart from people and pushing people <laughs> away with his emotional baggage and his damage. And it was just kind of so interesting to watch through the context of what we're living through right now. Um, I, and I'm sure, of course, this is going to have to, um, what we're living through is going to affect our art from now on. Like sure. someone said, are, are our dystopic futures going to have everyone in their pajamas? You know, like, <laughs> are we, what? How is this going to affect the zeitgeist of it all? It's yeah. going to be interesting to see, but it'll be, it'll be um, a total story. It'll be very fun to be part of. Oh, oh we, we can't hear you. A question. Can, oh, 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 can you hear me? Yes. yes. No. Nope. Oh, what oh, happened? Can't hear you. Okay. Uh, oh, so no, can. You can't hear me? Oh, no, no, can. Okay. Sorry. You know. You're up. Okay. Yeah. So fashionable. <laughs> um, Sue Campbell joining us all the way from Healdsburg has a question. Yeah. Hi, Sue. Um, Jenny, she wants to know uh, why you stopped acting and turned to producing. So years ago, I'm 50 now. I was 28 when I stopped acting. It was the movie Rick and I did together. And I had done lots of things like television commercials. <laughs> you know, um, I was a working actor, but I, I 
I studied theater arts when I was undergrad and I loved to do Shakespeare plays and plays. And then I started, moved to LA, started doing all these television commercials and I decided to produce a film. And this is back when you had to film it on film. It was really hard. And that was my first project I produced and I loved it so much. And then I was acting and it was too hard. It was so hard to do both. And I remember just saying, I just don't want to, um, I just don't want to get up in the morning and, and have to sell someone soap. And I remember I went to this shampoo commercial and I st I'm like, what do you do for a shampoo commercial? And the lady's like, pretend to wash your hair. And I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so I just, um, it was a great freedom to just be like, I want to be the person who puts all the pieces together to make the story. It just felt so right to do that. And so that's what I've been doing ever since. I, I love doing all the, what do we need? Where do we need to go? We just made a short in LA. We needed the theater and dancers. And we had teenage dancers that I called friends and we pulled it off. And I just find that so much more satisfying than worrying about my appearance and how to fake wash my hair on a shampoo commercial. I'm not belittling <laughs> acting. No, no, no. <laughs> um, no it's harder. And as a woman too, there's just not as many roles. Like Band of Brothers, you look at that. How many guys were in that film? Like, you know. We need a band 40. of sisters. But they need to make a band of sisters, and then maybe I'll start acting again. Uh, Jenny, uh, you and I had a chance to talk earlier. Can you tell us a little bit more about the band that was in the week? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> they have a website, and I trouble went, in the wind. Trouble in the wind. Thank you, because I was having a brain part of like oh, I talked what you're about this. For? Yes. Oh my lord. <laughs> no, no. Um, Trouble in the Wind, um, they are so good. So all the, almost all the um, music in the movie was either written and performed by Trouble in the Wind or Rick's brother, Josh, who was an amazing film composer. And then we had the one rap song, but- um, And think, Dave Dano did one. Oh, thing. and Dave Dano, our friend Dave Dano. Anyway, so, but, so, but the majority of the music majority is, Trouble, is in the Trouble in the Wind. And Trouble in the Wind is on Spotify. You can go to their stuff. They have a new album dropping. They are yes. awesome. They tour here and play at the- The, the Elephant, Elephant in the, the Room. room. But also they have, go to their website, troubleinthewind.com, and they have, they have their album there, which you can purchase, and it just has their tour dates, which I'm sure have been moved, but you know, when we're all let out here, I'm sure they'll have some cool tour dates. <laughs> hope they, um, back, we were hoping that maybe that we could get them to play at the Alexander Valley Film Festival. We love them, man. They're so they good. Are so good. They are incredible. The music's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. What, um, when were they last here? Do you remember? Uh, yeah. the, recently, like actually, a month we ago. met less than that, yeah. I, I, two weeks, three weeks ago, three right, weeks before, right, right before, right before we all got locked down. And did they yeah. come to Healdsburg because of the connection with you, or was that already on their radar? That was already, on their, already radar. on their radar. That's part of their Northern California tour that they were doing. They, they, all they do is tour. They're a touring band. They actually make a living as a band, and yeah. they just go and tour from Texas to Northern California and these loops and do all the stuff. Oh. They're San Diego based, mm -hmm. and they and they kill it in San Diego. They have a huge following in San yeah. Diego. So I think for them, it's a little like they go on the road and they go, "There's you know 20 people at the Elephant in the Room, yay!" But when they go to San Diego, <laughs> they have huge. 500, 600 people. And we know them because Lauren. Okay, I remember the scene. It's at Pasolacqua Tasting Room, and she's the one with the long red hair who's like. Dick, I'm a big fan. Like she's just like all over him. It's her brother's band. That's how we ended up with that. Oh, Again, it cool. all coming together yeah. in an interesting way. Um, um, oh, somebody went to the show at Elephant? Oh, Dan. Awesome. Do you yeah. guys know Dan Zastro? Yeah. yeah. Are they awesome? They're such a good band. I love them. That's awesome. And do you, yeah. do you guys know who Dan Zastro is who asked that oh. question? No, I don't. I know. Said that? So no. Dan Zastro is another showman much like Ryan in terms of the exhibition side. Yeah. But Dan's been doing it for years and years and years, and he lives in Healdsburg, and he's Casey like mostly, yeah. the huh. director of operations down at uh, the Raffel. Oh, the wow. that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Super cool. Love it. Yeah. Go film. Go art. Love it. Go art. Go um, art. So I, uh, I want to kind of uh, start to come to a close here. Um, but before we do that, and it's funny because you just started to talk about the band and how they, they make a living as a band and, and do all this touring. And I wanted to, if you could talk about the week in terms of what happens after you wrap a film, it's not just about getting it watched, but what is the life of the film afterward and what has that been like for you? 
Well, this particular film is, um, is one journey among many, many, many journeys. And there's a bunch of different levels of sort of how you can perceive success and not success. So, so I kind of look at it as there's the, there's the rocket ship version, right? Um, and I can name a bunch of films that are the rocket ship version. But, but basically, you come out of Sundance as a, um, as a jury prize winner. And you are hip pocketed by um, by Sony or by uh, uh, Searchlight or by the myriad of important independent small independent film studios that are offshoots of bigger bigger studios. You're absorbed by them, and you get a run. You get a certain amount of screens, and you get a certain amount of support for iTunes and digital platforms and all that. You'll have a Netflix run. You'll have a presence, mm -hmm. um, and you'll probably be in consideration for Spirit Awards and maybe even Oscar contention for films like Parasite and. You know, so so that so you're you're sort of hip pocket. You come out of Venice, you come out of Cannes, you come out. You know, you're 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 you have a platform to launch. Then there's a myriad out of a myriad of really good films that don't get in to platform at Sundance or Toronto or Venice or Cannes, they only and they do sort of this of second tier festivals that are still really big, beautiful festivals that promote. But then the sales agents kind of move down a peg, and so we wound up uh, we wound up waiting because we turned down a couple festivals early on that were sort of in those second tier levels, hoping for Sundance, hoping for the other thing. And then we had to backtrack and go back to them and go, Hey. And so we, so we wound up doing uh, our, our big festival was our premiere. Austin? What was that? Austin. Austin was our big festival. And so there's a lot of cool, there's a lot of cool distributors at Austin, yeah. but it's not South by Southwest. And so, so anyway, we, we built a festival run. We won some awards. We did really well. Sonoma we had international. And we won jury. Pro I mean, we won Chicago. the awards at, at, at Sonoma. And it was great. Um, we supported the film that way. Then there were a couple of different companies that were independent distributors that basically said, look, we're going to go for this type of digital rollout. This is the support you're going to get. This is the buy you're going to get. You're going to get Google ads and people, we're going to drive people through social media and do that thing. And then you build, you know, so like we were on Singapore Airlines and we were, and so you piece together. Now, it, it can work for a film like The Week because we did it so I can, expensively. I can say now, because I'm not trying to hold in, it's just full disclosure, it costs us $35,000 to make yeah. a feature film. Wow. That's impressive. It's so very impressive. part of doing that was, was being able to get into deals with Post and getting to, into deals with everybody saying, look, we're going to go make this thing. We're going to just... So many people make it. a film. They think making a film is just the filming. That's actually the tiniest part of it. So there's all the stuff before... The lining up the locations, the actors, SAG contracts, all of that. Then there's the actual filming. And then there's this huge post-production part where you are editing it, number one, color correcting, fixing the sound, putting in sound. People understand there's all these rights involved for music. So originally we had all these different songs. We had festival rights, but once we sold it, we had to swap that music out and put music that we'd have mm -hmm. right for. Um, yeah, the, the big one was the, the rap song. Uh, we had, uh, yeah, we had um, uh, 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 Straight Outta Compton. Straight Outta Compton we had for the festivals run, but we couldn't do that for um, Amazon. So there's this whole post, huge, huge post side, and we got this amazing partner that basically gave us post for free. They wanted to they be, became producers they became on producers it. with yeah. us on it. And, so but that was just from relationships in Los Angeles through the three guys yeah, between me, John, and John. Yeah. And we worked with those guys a whole bunch. So we got lucky in a huge way that way. And that's kind of where your leverage is because actors want to go out and have fun. I couldn't pay Joelle what she would get paid on a normal indie film. I couldn't pay anybody what they get paid on a normal indie film. So we was like, look, if we hit the jump shot from half court and win the game, everybody's going to own a piece of this film. So if we wind up going to Sundance and going right. down that road, then everybody goes, yeah, Austin, let's play. And like, who cares? We're just going to go have fun. And that's what we did. And so we landed somewhere in the middle. I mean, like you, you can, but, but you know, there's a whole spectrum of where so much out there and there's kind of a whole spectrum of where you can land. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you just try to make as many deals as you can and try to try to just get the film piece by piece, sell piece by piece until you're finally um, out of the red and, and, and say, okay, well, we made a film that made money. I don't know, on whatever, whatever level. And, and then there have been other films that I've done that, that were budgets were um, m multiple, many multiples of that, that I was a producer on and a writer on that you didn't recoup a fraction of. Right. Um, because mm -hmm. it was almost too impossible. Expensive. It's too expensive. Did you uh, end up making money on the week? 
Uh, somebody did. <laughs> the distributor, I think the distributor did. Um, by the time by the time it trickles down and all said and done, um, you know, it'll be it'll be a close call. <laughs> I don't I don't know yeah. that I don't know that it'll be worth you know yeah. writing to them. But but again, you get to um, you know, it's ours. It's ours. You made it. You know what I mean? It's ours. And so, we want to keep being able to make stuff. So in order to make stuff, you got to make stuff. So. And most important thing for me too is that, I mean, obviously you have to make money, but for a project like the week, there was an outside investment. It was the three, it was the three filmmakers came together and mm -hmm. pulled their money and made this film. And so it was a, it was a labor of love. And for us to just be, to just to know that we're on prime and we're on these other platforms and you can go see our movie if you want to go see it. Um, that's huge because yeah. we want to share it with people. Like, you, you know, there's a lot of it where you just kind of go like, go watch it, check it out, see what you think. Um, yeah. That's so amazing. I think, um, I, it, 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 I think it's a huge boon for everybody in our community too, just to be able to learn, hear, know people who are in the middle of this process um, and you know, grappling with it and working through it and all that stuff, and just getting a sense of what the ins and outs really are. Um, it really puts it to me. It doesn't take away any of the magic of filmmaking or movie making, but it it adds to just the layers of complexity of, like how how much of a miracle it is that movies even get made in the first place. Oh, oh it's yeah. crazy! It's crazy. crazy! It's an absolute! It's a, it's an to really think <laughs> about it. It's it's insane. I mean, but I I look at what you put on each year, and I think I have the same thought. I, I see every you know poster that leads me to the next screening, and I have all the orchestration of the flyers and this and the th and th and this party and come to this thing and this person speaking. And I sit back and I go, I've sat here, I ate a taco, I have watched a movie. <laughs> people are now talking. I'm saying hello to someone. We're cheersing. This is life. It feels just like life. This is conning me into think this is life, Catherine. How did she do make this nonchalant party that came out of nowhere? And I know how much planning, planning goes committee. into that. I know how much planning goes into that and how much and how much work goes into that. And but yet, um, you know, um, there's a there's an Italian word, uh, sprezzatura. Do you know that you know that term? Sprezzatura, which is like nonchalant genius. You know, it's like it's like people who practice people who practice everything and go like they talk about every detail. The planning committee goes, and then the thing has to be here and the best flow is for this. And then we all experience like these guys didn't even work to put on this party, man. It's so what's up? Um, so yeah, it's crazy. It's hard to do. It's really difficult, but I mean, it's, you know, it's the way it is for everybody trying to make anything. And just, I think we should have more filmmaking happening in Sonoma County. For sure. We're doing that. Like doing I'm in it. the middle of right now, writing another feature, um, that I'm working on with Steve Zahn that, cause now Steve and I started a production company that's yeah, again, on it's pause. So great. <laughs> but we are, but we are, but we are going to make, we are going, Steve and I are going to bring stuff here. Um, and yeah. we are going to make things here yes. when the thing, when the doors start opening up again, we are, we're, that's our plan. And we Love have it. a feature film that is going to be made here and that we are going to have to leave on our neighbors here. and stuff to, to, to make, but we're yeah. doing it. We're doing it. There yeah. will be another We're one. super excited. Um, so one last, uh, Okay, so Dan, Dan's showing some love, uh, but Tess says, my mom loved this film. She watched it yesterday and we discussed it over the phone, which is amazing. <laughs> um, she said the tone for what drew, not too heavy, but enough. What she loved as well was that she's uh, viewed it on Prime. Now that she's viewed it on Prime, new videos are being recommended that she never would have thought about. Um, what? And any recommendations along the same line to fill her quote unquote lockdown time? Good question to end on. Yeah, that's a really good that's question. A good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like Sideways is a great movie if you like the week, not just for the wine country connection, but there's a lot of like, a lot of growing up that happens in that film. Some, some looking about who you are and who you need to be and a lot of letting go. That's a big inspiration for us. Sideways yeah. is a big inspiration for us. Good, um, good one. Um, I'm trying to think. What a, what a Moonlight movie. Kingdom. Oh, she Moonlight might like. Kingdom. Uh, we love. We're huge, huge fans. Wes Anderson. Of Wes fans. Anderson. We are like. Um, but you like Wes Anderson, Catherine? I do. And um, Universe Willing, we're going to have a screening of a Wes Anderson film in the summer oh. Oh. Uh, oh. up at the Trading Post. Oh, we're Yay. doing that. Yeah. Which yeah, one are you doing? What's that? Budapest. Do you know, oh, Budapest. Yeah. Budapest Hotel. Awesome. Which we I love. Awesome. Um. um uh, you, you know, should check out Justified too as a series. Studied carelessness. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, thank you, Diane. Um, studied carelessness. Uh, 
Justified's really good, and Jamal's really good on it. Rick plays Vasquez on that. You're, that's a good series if you want to binge something. It's not on the air anymore, but I'm sure you If you can't get enough of Rick, go. No, it's a really good show. <laughs> uh, the lady who's got me nothing but 24-7. Oh, how lucky for her. Timothy Olyphant in it, too, which is good. What has he got? Timothy Oh, uh, Tim, Tim, Tim Olyphant. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, he is pretty great. He's actually really awesome in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And here's what we'll do, yeah. too. Is that, yeah, TV he plays star. that TV star. Oh, my God, oh it's so God, great. So We'll do, we'll, um, we're going to talk and we'll put, we'll post a list after this on the Facebook post. Of, Perfect. Of indie, yeah, yeah, yeah. indie film recommendations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Awesome. So what's going to happen is, um, we definitely got this thing recording. I don't think we made it to Facebook live, but we'll post it to Facebook and then we'll be able okay. to comment and you can leave some recommendations there. Uh, before we go, I just wanted to say, uh, by the way, Dan, Sue Campbell, uh, hailing all the way from Healdsburg, wanted me to say hello. Uh, to you. Um, and then we just confirmed our second in the shelter in place with AVFS series. Uh, next week at this time, at Sunday at 2 p.m., we will watch or we will talk to Scott Keneally from Rise of the Sufferfests. Uh, he created this documentary, as you can see here in the middle of a tough mutter. Um, event he filmed himself and his compatriots and he made a documentary uh about this uh craze that has happened and why people are compelled to punish themselves and uh, go through these events um but totally excited to talk to him and he lives in geyserville so uh his and and so i'll be sending out a link for everybody to check his stuff out check the film out um but uh, before we go, I mean, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll be doing this for the next three years and this will be the extent of the Film Society programming. But um, it's so wonderful to talk to both of you and to have you in our corner. And thank you for your support of the Film Society, but also just for making great stories and for taking risks and go art. We, we adore you out of proportion and appreciate so fully all the hard work that you put into this thing. And I've told you many, many times, you're my hero. And, I, and honestly, it's, it's, we, we love that. Without you here, it's harder for us to do what we're doing. It is a, a beautiful symbiotic relationship. So we love adore it. you. We adore well, you. Likewise, uh, everybody get back to your sheltering in place. Yes. And uh, hopefully we'll talk to you before next week. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.